So many of us have been personally feeling the effects of the rising cost of housing in the United States. Housing is one of our most very basic needs, but housing is becoming harder and harder to maintain. Rent prices are increasing, mortgage prices are increasing, loan interest rates are increasing, and even if you're locked into a really good mortgage, property taxes and homeowners insurance are also on the rise. On top of that, inflation is causing the price of just about everything to increase too. Groceries, gas, clothing, all of these basic necessities are rising way faster than our wages are. It's easy to become discouraged and to live in this constant state of stress. Most of us are just treading water, waiting for things to get better, or hoping that nothing bad happens. But that way of living will become exhausting if it goes on for too long. So what can we do to help stop all this struggling? First, I wanna show you some kind of crazy housing statistics that are gonna let you know that you're not alone in your feelings of struggle. These numbers are gonna show you just how unaffordable things really are right now. Then I'm gonna share with you 10 ways that you can reduce your housing expenses. Some of these are going to be smaller, easier changes, while others involve making some bigger changes that may require a little bit of creativity. First, let's talk rent prices. In January of 2020, the average cost to rent an apartment was $1,112. In January 2023, just three years later, that amount was $1,339. That is over a 20% increase in rental price in just the past three years. If more than 30% of your income is going towards rent prices, you are considered rent burdened. And that means that the average American needs to be making over $4,400 a month in order to not be considered burdened by their rental cost. This statistic that I just shared was just for apartments. If you include all types of rentals, including like single family homes, the average price of rent in the United States jumps up to $2,029, which means the average family needs to make over $67,000 a month in order to not be rent burdened. Currently, over 50% of renters are paying over that 30% of their income. For people who are making less than $50,000 a year, that number jumps up to 75% of people are struggling to pay for their housing costs. Now let's talk mortgages and home ownership. Right now, the housing market is so unaffordable that over 75% of homes on the market are too expensive for middle income earners. The average US income is $75,203. It is suggested that less than 28% of your pre-tax income that you would spend that on your mortgage, which puts the average American's mortgage at $1,232. That's what it should be. Well, the average American's mortgage is currently at $1,957. On top of these already high mortgages, property taxes and homeowners insurance are on the rise also. And if you're trying to get a mortgage right now, things are looking really bad. Our current mortgage interest rates are between seven and a half and eight percent, just depending on what your credit score is, which is significantly higher than it was in 2020 when the average interest rates were around three percent. An increase of five percent doesn't seem like a whole lot, but let's break down some of those numbers and show you exactly what it does to your monthly payment. So the median home sales price in the United States for the second quarter of 2023 was $416,000. So let's say you get a loan for $416,000 and you get a 30 year fixed loan with an interest rate of 8%, which is our current interest rate then your monthly payment is gonna be $3,052. Now let's go back to the 2020 interest rates. 
if you were to get that same loan at a 3% interest rate, your monthly payment would have only been $1,754. That is an increase of almost $1,300 a month. Personally, a $416,000 loan is not something that I would get. So I probably wouldn't get a mortgage over, say, around $200,000. That would be a more realistic number for my family. So if I were to get a loan today at the 8% interest rate, then my monthly payment would be $1,468. If I were getting that same loan three years ago, at a 3% interest rate, my monthly payment would only be $843. That is a $625 difference on my monthly payment. That basically means that if you could afford a $200,000 house in 2020, today you could only afford a $115,000 house. That means your buying power has been almost cut in half. If you couple that with the fact that the housing value has increased so much, then a house that sold for $200,000 in 2020 might be selling for $300,000 today. So just the quality and value that you are getting in a home and what you qualify for has just been so drastically reduced just in the past three years. So I know all that was pretty negative, but I just wanted you to know that if you're struggling and you're feeling defeated, you are definitely not alone. And the numbers validate those feelings. The cost of housing really has increased dramatically and it really is a lot harder to find affordable housing, pay for it, and just staying afloat and keeping a roof over our heads has gotten a lot harder. I have personally felt it. My family is selling our home and moving back to our hometown. That is a lot less expensive. So we've had to make some pretty drastic changes to our living situation also. So we know there's a housing crisis. We know things are difficult. So what can we do to fix things and to prevent the struggle as much as possible. We can take control of our finances and we can make things better and we can make this work for us. So I'm gonna share with you 10 things that you can do to actively help improve, change your housing situation. Now, everybody's situation is different. Some of us have children, maybe you're single or maybe you're on a fixed income. Some of us are more flexible than others in our work situation. And there's just a lot of factors that come into play here. So I'm gonna give you lots of different options and hopefully at least one or maybe two of them will work out for you. The very first thing that you need to do before I get into any of these ideas is you need to make sure that you have a budget and you know exactly what money's coming in, what money is going out and where all of that is going. You need to get a really good idea of your financial situation before you can make any changes. The next thing you need to do is you need to do some math. You need to figure out what percent of your income is going towards housing. If you're under that 30%, then you probably don't need to make any changes. But if you're paying more than 30% for your housing, then you might need to make some changes. And if you're spending well over 30% on housing, then you should definitely consider making some pretty drastic changes so that you are not so burdened by housing costs. And if you are over that 30%, just know you're not alone. As I mentioned before, 75% of people making less than $50,000 are considered burdened by their housing cost. And if you make over $50,000, you include everybody. 21% um, of homeowners and 50% of renters are having a difficult time paying their housing expenses. Okay, so let's get into some ways that you can reduce your housing cost. The first one could be to get roommates. Um, you can have somebody move in on a long-term basis, or maybe you could rent out a room or a basement uh, on an app like Airbnb. That's a great way to bring in a little bit of extra income and share those housing costs. Next, if you have a property, 
you can consider renting out a uh, part of your property like away from your home. You could just rent out the piece of property to somebody maybe long term or there's a lot of like on Airbnb, you can even put up like a tent and do like some sort of clamping site or buy an RV or a tiny house or something like that. Put something on your property that you can rent out on Airbnb you can actually get quite a lot of money for having these rental spaces, either long-term or short-term. You're struggling paying your housing costs and so are other people. Other people are looking for affordable places to live and are willing to downsize. So maybe some long-term rentals on your property in an RV or some really small space can not only benefit you, but can benefit somebody else. Next, you might want to downsize. If you're renting, then find something smaller and more affordable to rent. If you own a home, you might consider selling your house for something smaller. Not only is downsizing going to save you in the cost of your house, but also things like utilities, furnishings, yard maintenance, insurance, property taxes, all of these things are more than likely going to decrease when you move into something smaller. Now, selling your home and buying a new one is only a good idea right now with interest rates so high in very certain circumstances. Like it's not necessarily going to be a better move to sell your house and buy something new. If you're already locked into a low interest rate, and you're going to be trading that in for a higher interest rate. So really make sure that you do the numbers and make sure you're not getting yourself into a worse situation or maybe even only a slightly better situation because you definitely don't want to be paying higher interest rates unless you really need to. Consider moving to a more affordable housing market. Some areas in the country are much more expensive to live than others. This is something that we've done in order to save on our housing cost is we uh, lived in Florida and Florida was becoming extremely unaffordable and extremely expensive. So we decided to move to a more rural area outside of that state. Do a live in flip. This is actually what I've done twice now is I bought a fixer upper we fixed it up and then we sold it for a much higher price than we originally paid for it. This is really a smart idea to really build equity through home ownership by buying something that you renovate, living in it while you're renovating it, and then reselling it in a few years once you get it done and you've had somewhere to live during this whole time. Again, if you're gonna have to get a loan on the house, definitely check interest rates. But if you're only gonna be keeping it for a couple years and then selling it, then the interest rate in the long run might not be that big of a deal as long as you're able to make the monthly payments. So definitely get something that you can super afford and is very much below your budget because you're also gonna be putting money into the house. Buy a multi-unit home, maybe a duplex or a quadplex or something that has a mother-in-law suite or some sort of rental income so that you can live in one of these sections of the house and rent out the other apartments. A lot of times, not only is this going to cover the cost of your mortgage, but you can also make money doing it this way and then you're building equity in your house and just in the long run this is a really good investment option if the house has a mother-in-law suite you could also live in the mother-in-law suite and then rent out the main house for quite a bit more money move into an rv or a tiny house you could either buy or rent your land with this option but this is a much smaller space. You could potentially go off grid and not have any utility bills. And this is something that we are definitely considering doing. Buy land and build your own home. This option isn't for everyone, but I do have a friend here in Tennessee who is a single mom and has two kids and she bought a piece of property and her and her two kids built their home. They built this whole sustainable, energy efficient home. They camped out on their land through the spring 
summer and fall and by winter they had their house ready to live in. This is obviously a more extreme option, but you can save hundreds of thousands of dollars by doing this. It's also a great experience and a great learning opportunity. Yeah. You could move in with friends and family. Right now with housing prices so expensive, a lot of us are going to have to start sharing housing costs. You might just move in for the short term while you're saving money to put a down payment on a house and while you're waiting for the interest rates to drop because they will eventually drop. And this is really a smart idea if you are wanting to purchase a house or a rental property or a flip is if you can get yourself out of paying expensive housing costs right now and squirrel away as much money as you can, then when the interest rates do drop, then you will be in a position to make that investment purchase. Consider if renting is going to be more affordable than buying, especially with interest rates being so high right now. Uh, renting might be a better option. I mean, rental prices are going up too, but there's a lot of other costs associated with home ownership and now might not be the best time to buy a house. Not only do you have the purchase price of the house and your monthly mortgage payment, but you also have to consider closing costs, moving expenses, taxes, homeowners insurance, all of those things add up. And then if something does break or go wrong with the house when you own it, you're responsible for paying for all of those repairs. So you need to have some money in savings to be able to fix any unexpected expenses. And if things are tight, then that might not be an option for you. When you rent, the landlord takes care of it. Also, when you rent, you're more flexible with your housing situation and you're not locked into something that you can't get out of pretty quickly. While things are so fluctuating right now and not stable, renting really might be a better option for you. If you're looking for other tips on saving money, check out this video right here. And if you want to greatly reduce your grocery bill, I feed my family of five on just $400 a month and we eat very healthy. Check out this video right here for my seven must have extremely low cost staple grocery items that I add into my meal plans every week.